Okay, Assalamualaikum and good uh, day everyone. Right, so this is the continuity of uh, the previous lecture, okay, which is on the connections uh, on the joints and connections. Right, so previously we have stopped in the uh, types of joints. Right, okay, whereas we have uh, tension joints, we have compression joints, and also shear joints. Okay, so as for the next one, okay, so what we can see here is that we have flexion and torsional joints okay so as for this one okay it is resolved into a couple uh, generating direct tension okay uh, direct compression and also shear all right so a cold joint should not be in compression zone okay whereas the placement of wet concrete of an x mole uh, precast uh, surface with no preparation or applied bonding agents right so this is what we wanted to avoid right so we have to make sure okay when we wanted to apply the joints okay uh, it should not be uh, on a surface that is not uh, prepared okay right so uh, the main design criteria okay for uh, this uh, flexural and torsional joints okay is that it has to have adequate encourage okay, for tension okay and uh, the casting okay of fully anchored a steel plate or threaded uh, socket Alright, so we can see here in the figure, right? Okay, so we have the in situ concrete infill, right? And we can see that we have the projecting reinforcement, right? So these are the reinforcements that we can see from the two precast units, okay? Right, so once uh, it is connected, okay, in the uh, joints, okay, so therefore here we are going to uh, provide the concrete, uh, in situ concrete infill, right? And uh, between the precast, uh, between the projecting reinforcement also, okay, we need to have these tolerances, right? So uh, this uh, reinforcement or projecting reinforcement will actually uh, give us the allowance, okay, for the tensile and also compressive uh, forces, okay? Right, so this is another uh, example, okay, whereas we have the projecting plates, okay, instead of the projecting reinforcements, right? So as for these plates, okay, it will be um, having bolts, okay, which are shear friction bolts, okay, uh, in that is uh, placed into holes, okay, and once it is connected, right, so therefore uh, we are going to infill with in situ concrete. Right, so here, okay, we are going to get the uh, uh, joints, okay, for this type of structure. Right, so we can see here that we have two different types. Okay, one is with the projecting reinforcement, and another one is with the uh, projecting plates. Okay, so uh, next we move on to the bearing and bearing stresses. Okay. Uh, so, uh, for this bearing, okay, it is designed for structural strength and integrity, right? So, we have a few types, okay, of bearings, okay, so uh, the first one, okay, is uh, known as the dry bearing, right? So, what is dry bearing, right? So, dry bearing is the precast to precast or precast to in situ concrete, right? So, when we talk about dry bearing, okay, means that we are ha having, okay, a direct contact between uh, the elements, okay? Whereas usually we are going to avoid this, right? So we do not have, uh, we do not want to have this direct contact, right? Because we want to, to avoid spalling, right? Okay, so next is the extended bearings. Okay, so as for this extended bearing, this is actually the uh, earlier type of connection, okay, that is used in a precast concrete structure. Okay, so uh, this is where, okay, the temporary bearing is small. And uh, reinforced, uh, reinforced in situ concrete is used to complete the connection, right? So as for this, we can see uh, this uh, example of a of an extended bearing, right? Whereas we can see that the uh, uh, bearing key okay, between the elements is very small, key okay, which is only this part, right? Then it will be completed, key okay, with this part, key okay, of reinforced in situ concrete infill, key okay, that makes the permanent bearing, right? So we are going to uh, cast in situ okay, uh, this part okay, with uh, together with the reinforcements here right so there are actually uh, problems okay, arising when we are using this type of bearing connection okay, whereas it is subjected to shrinkage and flexural cracking in the top of the uh, precast to in situ interface okay, which is this part
Alright, okay, so uh, you can see here, okay, this is the part okay, where it is usually subjected to this shrinkage, right? So this is uh, why okay, we actually wanted to avoid this type of uh, connection, right? So this is on the early uh, years of the precast uh, concrete system, okay? Right, so the next one is dry pack bearing, okay, where elements are located on thin uh, 3 to 10 mm thick shims okay, and the resulting small gap is filled using a semi-dry sand or cement grout. Right, so we can see this in figure A, right, okay, which is this one. Right, so uh, we can see here, okay, these are the precast elements right, and it is uh, having this uh, bearing okay, whereas we have this dry pack mortar. Right, okay, or the grout, okay, which is the bearing uh, material okay, between these two uh, elements. Okay, right? So that is for uh, dry pack bearing. Right? Then the next one is bedding bearing, okay, where elements are positioned onto a prepared uh, semi-wet sand or cement, uh, sand cement grout. Right? So we can see this in figure B. Right? Okay, which is, uh, we can see here that we have this wet uh, bedded mortar, right? Okay, before the placement of the uh, precast element, okay, and we also have this leveling uh, shim, okay, which is the uh, uh, bearing material, right? Okay, so we have this, okay, and also we have the wet bedded mortar. Okay, right, so next one, okay, so that is bedding bearing, right? So another one is elastomeric or soft bearing, okay, which is using neoprene water, uh, rubber, okay, or similar bearing pads, right? So, as for this one, it is using the bearing pads, right? So, uh, we can see that we have this uh, bearing pad that is placed here, right? Okay, with, uh, and we have to provide the clear cover, clear cover of concrete, right? Okay, which is on this part. Right, so we can see here that this uh, element okay, has to be extended to a certain point, okay, to a certain distance of bearing. Okay, then only we are going to provide this elastomeric bearing. Okay, so it should be uh, the bearing pad should be uh, in between ten to fifteen millimeters thick. Right, so we can see here that we have the uh, thickness. Uh, we have the uh, bearing pad. Right. Then another one, okay, which is the last one, is the steel bearing, okay, which is using steel plates or structural steel sections. Right. So we can see here that we have uh, the bus welded okay, or otherwise anchored uh, to cast in uh, bearing plates. Right. So we have the cast in bearing plates and also we have to provide the steel or steel rubber bearing pad, okay, which is up to 10 to 15 millimeters. Right. Okay, so this one, uh, as for this, okay, it can be either steel or it can be a combination of steel and also rubber. Right. So this is another type of uh, connection okay, that we can use. Okay, so the next one, okay, we move on to the bearing pads. Right. Okay. Okay, so as for the bearing pads, right, so uh, the purpose of bearing pads, okay, is to distribute <coughs> the concentrated loads, okay, to allow limited horizontal and rotational movement, okay, and uh, prevent direct concrete to concrete contact, right, okay, which uh, we have discussed earlier, right, okay, when we have the uh, dry bearing, right, so dry bearing, it means that we have the concrete to concrete contact. Right, so this concrete to concrete contact okay, may lead to unsightly spalling okay, or reduction of effective concrete cover. Right, so this is what we wanted to avoid. Right, we wanted to avoid the friction okay, between those two materials. Okay, so uh, it is commonly applied okay, with double T floor units okay, and long span beams where end rotation may be quite large. Right, so the materials that we can use for the bearing pads are, nat are hard natural rubbers. Okay, synthetic rubbers, okay, for example, we have neoprene and also chloroprene. Okay, then we have lead, okay, uh, steel or felt. Right? So, these are the materials okay, that we can use for the bearing pads okay, between the uh, elements. Okay? Right, so, now we look into the connections okay, between elements, okay, whereas we have uh, the pin connections and also the moment resisting connection. Okay, as what we have uh, discussed earlier in the frame analysis. Okay, 
Right, so first we go into the pin connections. Okay, it is used widely as it is the simplest element to element bearing. Right, so it, invol it involves okay, one bearing surface only okay, with no flexural continuity across the ends of individual elements. Right, so as what we have discussed previously, right, so we are not going to transfer any moments okay, between the uh, elements okay, when we are using the pin connections. Okay. Right, so uh, it will transfer purely shear forces, okay, both for the dominant uh, gravity and possible uplifting forces due to overturning. Okay, and steel inserts are used to increase bearing capacity and reduce localized spalling. Right, so uh, we are going to use grout for fire and durability protection. Right, okay, so uh, this connection okay, between uh, uh, the uh, elements okay, might have steel inserts okay, and we need to grout okay, that uh, uh, area okay, in order to have uh, the protection against fire okay, and also durability. Okay, right, so these are the uh, examples of positions of pin jointed connections okay, in skeletal structures. Right, so we can see here okay, that if we are talking about pin jointed connections, right, so therefore uh, we are going to have uh, the connections okay, in uh, skeletal structures which is between the beams and the columns okay, will not uh, transfer any moments. Right? So we have uh, the connections between a beam to column head, beam to column face right? okay, when we have uh, the uh, middle floor right? okay, then we also have column to foundation right? which is only for uh, brace frame. Okay, then we also have the uh, connection between floor slab to beam okay, and also we have column to column. Right? So this is uh, if we are having uh, the connections between uh, uh, columns. Okay? So this is a vertical connection. Right? So we can see here these are the examples okay, whereas we have a uh, column head connection right? here. Okay, we have uh, this uh, double bar okay, which is provided from the uh, column right okay and uh, this actually allow for flexural rotations right so when we talk about pin jointed connections okay it means that it allows for rota rotations to uh, happen right okay we do not have any uh, restraint okay against rotations okay then uh, this is another one which is uh, the connection between beam to column face okay whereas you can see that we have this core bell Right, and we have the double bar okay, that is extended uh, from the uh, uh, core bell, right, okay, which is uh, as the pre uh, preparation for the beam okay, to be sitting on top of this uh, support. Right, okay, so uh, in this design, okay, we also allow for flexural rotation, okay, whereas we do not have um, any tension uh, forces happening at the side here. Right, okay, whereas we allow for the rotation to happen. Okay, then another one, okay, uh, for the uh, slab to beam uh, connection, right, again we have this stutter bar, okay, however, okay, we are not going to have any tension, okay, happening uh, in between these two elements, right, okay, but we only have uh, this uh, supporting bar, okay, which is to uh, cater for the connection, right, so we have this slab to beam connections, okay. Right, so that is for a uh, pin connections, okay, and we can see here this is a uh, figure on site, okay. So we have the column here, okay, and we have the beam, okay, that is sitting here, and these are the dowel bars, okay. So we can see that uh, in between these two uh, beams, okay, we do not have any reinforcements, okay, that is restraining between those two, right, those two elements, right. So therefore, we are not going to transfer any uh, moments to the column okay and we are not going to have any negative moments at this connection as well right okay so even though it is sitting together okay on the column okay however no moments will be uh, no negative moments will be uh, generated here okay right so if we see from the detailing right so this is the detail uh, connection or detail reinforcements okay between the uh, beams okay, and also the column. So we can see here okay, these lines, okay, vertical lines are the reinforcements for the column okay, and we have the reinforcements uh, for the beam as well. Right? So as for the reinforcement for the beam, right, it will stop here okay, which is in between the 
um, uh, beams, right? K whereas uh, it is uh, separated K okay, between the beam on our left and also uh, the beam on our right. Okay, right. So next is for moment resisting connections. Okay, so as for this one, it is capable to transfer in plane bending moments to some degree. Okay, then uh, for the moment uh, resisting connections sim is simulating monolithic cast in situ frames. Okay, it is uh, possible at foundations okay, and between beams and columns. Right? Okay, so as for this one, okay, when we talk about moment resisting connections, okay, it is almost similar to the cast in situ system. Right, so cast in situ connections are not fully rigid okay, with a flexural stiffness of 70 to 90 kilonewton meter. Okay, right. So we can see here these are the positions of moment resisting connections in skeletal structures. Right. So we have uh, the continuity okay, at column splice. Right. Then we have uh, the continuous beam. Okay. When we have a continuous beam, therefore we are not we are going to have continuous uh, reinforcements. Okay. Then we have a uh, tie still anchored uh, to or through columns. Right. So with these cobels. Right. So as for this one, okay, we do not allow for the tension to happen, right? Okay, so then uh, we also have this one, okay, whereas we have the tie in uh, steel floor, right? Then we have, uh, uh, as for the column uh, foundation connection, okay, also we have this moment resisting connections, okay? Whereas we have the base plate uh, withholding down bolts, okay? Right, so moment resisting connections, right? It is capable to transfer in plane bending moments to some degree, right? Okay, mm -hmm. and we are going to have uh, this reinforcement, okay? If we can see here, okay, the connection, okay, between these two beams, okay, of the precast uh, beams, okay, and here we are going to have the projecting bus from beam right okay so we have these beams key okay, that uh, will require this lapping okay between the uh, at the connection okay and we also have the uh, column here right and, uh, we have the column here okay and we also have the connecting dowel right so this dowel bar is a, is a requirement okay whether we are using this moment resisting connection or we are using the pin jointed connection okay however Okay, which uh, the one that differs, okay, these two types of connections, okay, is this one, okay, which is the reinforcing bar, right? So, we have this projecting uh, reinforcing bars, okay, and we need to have this lapping, okay, in order to cater for the negative uh, moments, right? So, as what you, uh, we have already learned, okay, in the uh, analysis, okay, in the uh, design, uh, in the... In the bending moment uh, diagram, okay, when when we talk about uh, having uh, reinforce, uh, having uh, the bending moment at the uh, connections, okay, so at uh, continuous connections, right? So therefore, we are going to have negative moments, okay. So uh, this is why, okay, we need to have the reinforcement that is placed on top, okay, right, to cater for that tensile forces on top. Right, okay, so we can see the uh, forces okay, acting okay, and we have this uh, tension uh, happening on top, right, uh, having to, uh, uh, which is subjected to this tension forces and also compression forces. Okay, right, so this is the example okay, of uh, moment resistant connections, right, okay, we can see that we have the reinforcements key okay, that is embedded inside the uh, from the element okay, to the column right okay so continuity of moment is affected by the transfer of a couple of actual forces adjustments may be made at operative sites okay, to achieve the connection purpose right so this adjustments key okay, means that uh, we are going to uh, adjust on in terms of the reinforcements and all Okay, so the connections are used mainly to stabilize and to increase the stiffness of water and skeletal frames. Okay, it is to reduce the depth of flexural frame members. Okay, distribute second order moments into beams okay, and slabs and hence reduce the column moments. Right, so as we know, when we talk about pin jointed connections, right, the column will take 
mostly of the forces, right? But no uh, moments will be redistributed into the beams, right? So if we are using this uh, moment resistance connections, okay, therefore we can uh, transfer or redistribute the uh, moments into the beams and also slabs. Okay, and it could also improve resistance okay, to progressive collapse. Okay, so moment resistant connections should be proportioned okay, whereas connections should be designed to experience only ductile failures okay, and uh, we have to avo avoid brittleness okay, by making sure the limiting strength of the connection okay, is not governed by shear friction, okay, short length of well okay, and plates embedded in thin sections. Okay. Right, so we can see here, right, so now we move on to the connections in skeletal frames, right. Okay, so we have a few types okay, of connections okay, that we are going to uh, provide okay, in skeletal frames, okay. So the first one is floor slab to beam connections, okay. So we have two categories, okay, which uh, is um, the connections at supporting joints, okay, and also connections at non-supporting joints okay so it is usually designed as simple supports okay which is not to cater for any uh, moments okay then uh, for holocaust lab it is usually laid dry okay onto the shelf provided by the boot of the beam right so the boot of the beam is the place okay where as we have this uh, bearing space okay so wet bedding uh, bearings okay, can be used for uneven surfaces right so if we have uh, any uneven surfaces okay we can provide okay this grout uh, or uh, wet mortar first right okay so it is supposed to be wet wet right okay so uh, here okay you can see that we have this precast units okay the slabs and also the beam right and we have this in situ concrete infill Okay, whereas we have uh, this tile placed in top uh, open uh, course and slab, right? So we are going to provide uh, this tile steel, okay, which is uh, as the protection, okay, between the connections. Okay, right? So uh, this tile force, okay, in uh, side place bars, okay, so at side, okay, we are going to uh, place this bars, okay, before the grouting is uh, provided on the uh, section okay right then uh, we have connections at supports okay so it, it is simply supported okay but a degree of end restraint may be present okay due to couple between the contact plane and the tie back right and objective in connection is to transfer vertical loading form uh, lo vertical to transfer ver uh, vertical loading okay from the slab to beam in both normal and abnormal Okay, which is in uh, fire or accident, okay, loading conditions. It must fulfill the requirements of load transfer, okay, structural integrity and ductility. Okay, right, so these are the examples. Okay, well, as you can see here that we have the beam, okay, and this is the slab. Okay, so here we have the longitudinal tie, okay, which is uh, provided Okay, to uh, as the connection, right? So this is an example of a direct encourage. Okay, so for a hollow core unit, right? We uh, there are cases that we have this projecting loops, okay, from the beam, okay, and also we have the loop tie bars, okay, that is placed into the floor unit, right? So, uh, this is uh in uh for a hollow core unit, okay, whereas we are going to provide this, right? So we are going to have the double action between the loops. Okay, then we also have uh, the double action key okay, between loops and bars key okay, as we have the projecting loop key okay, that is from the beam key okay, and we have the l shape uh, tie bars key okay, that is provided uh, that is uh, provided into the floor units right so this is another one okay then we also have um for double T units, okay, whereas we usually have this bearing, uh, this uh, connection, okay, bearing connection that is embedded inside the uh, unit, right? Okay, so this is a uh, place, okay, during the uh, casting of the uh, of the uh, material, okay, uh, casting of the unit, right? Okay, so it is provided, okay, and on site, okay, this. A uh, part key okay, will be uh, welded to plates key okay, uh, fully anchored in units, right? So it will be um, uh, welded key okay, into uh, to towards the 
uh, bar that is provided on the uh, precast beam. Right, so this is also another type of connection that can be used okay, for this uh, slab to uh, slab to beam connection. Okay, right. So uh, this is for the floor slab to internal beam connections. Right. Okay, we can see that we have uh, the placement of the slabs here. Okay, and also we have this uh, projecting uh, U-shaped bar. Okay, that is from the beam. Okay, and this is the uh, tie steel okay, that is placed in uh, top uh, of open car open course in the slab right okay then this is another one okay whereas we have the projecting tie steel bend down on site right so this is another one okay whereas it is uh, connected on site here okay with the projecting l shaped bar okay that is from the uh, beam okay provided from the beam Right then, um, this is almost similar to this one. Right then, uh, this is if we have different levels okay, of uh, slabs. Okay, so we have different levels, and uh, both slabs are supported by one L beam. Right, and another one. This one is when we have a projecting uh, U shaped bar. Right. Okay, so uh, with the slab flush uh, with top of beam. Okay. Right, so this is an inverted T beam okay, with the very latch of more than 100. Right, so we can see that here okay, we have the uh, projecting uh, bar. Right, so uh, we only need to um, uh, place okay, the tie bar. Right, okay, then okay, so that is uh, for the floor slab, uh, floor slab to beam connections. Right, so this is on the nominal okay. bearing length. Okay, whereas we have uh, for hollow core slab, right? Okay, so uh, usually we require 75 mm bearing length, okay, and it can be at least 60 mm after considering spalling uh, allowances, okay, and uh, it can be using a rigid neoprene strips or wet mortar bedding, okay, uh, for uniform bearing. Okay, then we also have double T. Right, so for double T slab, right, so the bearing length okay, should be at least 150, right, uh, 150 mm. It should always sit on rigid 100 to 100 uh, millimeters neoprene, okay, or similar uh, uh, pass, okay, of uh, 8 to 10 millimeters thickness, okay. Then the bearing uh, less than 100 millimeters is not recommended, right? So, uh, because usually for double T slab, okay, it is uh, using a very uh, high uh, length, okay? So, uh, it is a very long uh, span, right? Okay, so therefore, okay, we should uh, provide okay, at least 100 millimeters uh, bearing, right? Okay, so it should not be less than uh, 100 mm, mm as well. Okay, then for the uh, plank floor, right, so if we are using the plank floor, okay, therefore the nominal bearing length, okay, should be 75 mm, okay, with the continuity of reinforcement by mesh lapping, okay, with projecting reinforcement in beams or walls, okay, right, so this is if we are using the composite uh, uh, construction. Okay, right, so uh, this is examples of mis misplacement of bearing pads to double T units, right? So as for this one, okay, the bearing pad uh, is extended beyond the uh, bearing space, okay? So therefore, we are going to end up with this part of bearing pad which is not effective, right? So uh, this is to be avoided, right? Then another one, this is another example okay, of a misplaced position, right? So this is the end of the uh, slab. Uh, of a double T slab and we can see that this uh, bearing pad okay, is placed uh, at this location okay, so instead of it is uh, under the uh, under the element okay, but it is uh, placed uh, a bit uh, backwards right so therefore it should not uh, this should be avoided as well right okay, because we are going to have uh, ineffective part as well okay, for this bearing pad okay Alright, then uh, this is the next one, okay, which is the connections at longitudinal joints. Okay, right. So it is uh, provided between edges okay, of precast floor units and beams, okay, of walls running parallel with the floor. Right, so the one that we have discussed just now, okay, is uh, between the 
um, between the uh, connection okay, to the ends of our uh, slabs. Okay, however, this is on the side of the slab, right? Okay, when we talk about uh, the uh, connection, okay, mm -hmm. in the longitudinal direction. Okay, so it is to transfer horizontal shears, okay, generated in floor plate by diaphragm actions, okay, between uh, mm -hmm. floor, slab and beams, right? So we can see here, okay, uh, in this view, okay, we are going to see, okay, the hollows of the uh, slab, right, for a hollow core slab, right? So uh, for this uh, purpose, okay, we are going to have this projecting tie bars, okay, which is to connect, okay, between the uh, slab and also the uh, beams or walls okay right so uh, we have here so we have the tops uh, of hollow core units removed at intervals okay so at certain places okay we are going to remove this in order to provide this projecting tie bars right so after it is provided okay therefore we are going to pour the in situ concrete right so this is for the uh, transfer of horizontal shears okay then as for this one uh, also we have uh, uh, another type, okay, whereas we have concrete soffit unit, uh, unit, okay, so uh, this is another type, okay, whereas we are going to add up, okay, this unit, right, so this is for a connection to a double T unit, right, so usually we are going to use the uh, welded connection, right, so uh, then we are going to provide the in-situ topping, right, so this is for double T unit. Okay, so floor connections at, wall, uh, at load bearing uh, walls, okay, or components, right? So horizontal joints in uh, load bearing walls occur at uh, floor and foundation levels, okay, with the primary forces uh, vert which uh, provides the vertical compression from upper panels and floor diaphragm, uh, effect, uh, effect of horizontal shear. Then for the secondary forces, okay, it is uh, due to temperature, uh, long-term shrinkage, creep, and end restraints moments. Okay, so wide range of connections, okay, will involve uh, in situ concrete and tie steel, okay, welding or combination of both. Right, so these are the examples, okay, of load bearing wall to wall uh, connections, okay, using reinforced uh, in situ joints. Right, so this is. Uh, in the um, uh, plan view, okay, whereas we can see that we have this tie okay, between the walls, okay, and uh, this is another one, okay, whereas we have the tie bar, right, and also uh, here, okay, is the uh, here is showing the uh, air vent, okay, between the um, uh, grout holes, okay. So load bearing wall to wall connections okay, using welded joints, right? So these are examples okay, when we are uh, using the welded joints, right? So uh, we have the projecting bar side uh, welded to steel uh, plate insert, right? So we have this uh, part, okay, whereas uh, it has to be uh, welded. Okay, and this is the last one, okay, whereas we have the continuous connections of floor slab to external wall joints, right? Okay, so we can see that we have U-shaped sidebars, right? So this is uh, the bus, uh, the projecting bar that is from the uh, beam, okay, or the core bell. Okay, um, so this is actually, uh, is not from the beam, okay, it's actually from the wall, okay, because uh, as for this part, okay, we are... Uh, dealing with the uh, wall structure, right? So as for this one also, it is uh, to the wall, okay? But uh, it has this uh, connection, okay? Or the uh, cobel, okay? That is uh, preparing for the uh, connection to the floor slab, right? Okay, so uh, we can see that we have this projecting L-shaped bars and as for this one, it has the U-shaped bar, right? Okay, then uh, we have the slab, Okay, uh, then we have to connect okay, using the uh, provided reinforcement. Okay, as for this one, okay, and as for the projecting L-shaped bars, okay, it can be embedded inside uh, inside the floor slab. Okay, so this is another one, okay, which is the intermittent connections, okay, and extended bearings of an uh, open floor slab to wall joints, right? So we can also use these inserts, okay, whereas we have the shape. K 
Okay, and we have uh, here we are going to have the anchor bars, right? So we have the extended bearings uh, into wall ledges, right? So when we have this ledge, right, uh, it can actually be inserted into place, right? Okay, so uh, we have the walls, okay, we have uh, the uh, extended bearings that is from the uh, floor slab, right? Then we can connect this together, okay, with the uh, steel plate inserts, okay, which will be uh, welded. Okay, right. So, uh, that will be the end. Okay, for this uh, joints and connections, right. So then, uh, we are going to continue. Okay, with uh, another part uh, uh later. Right. So with that, uh, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.